Washington. The next lecturer is Silvio Perezinello from the University of San Paolo, and they will speak about the tidal evolution of closing satellites and the exoplanets. Okay. Well, better now than during the talk. Darwin theory. Uh, let me uh, say that Darwin here is not the same Darwin that everybody knows from the, the theory of evolution, but his son that was professor at the University of Cambridge. Okay, uh, the, the twist. I, I start with a list of Okay, uh, everything in, in this lecture, more or less, is in this publication, so uh, I will not pay attention, my attention to the equations. Everyone can see that there. Uh, here are the, the subject of tides has been worked by many people during the past century. And uh, I give here a list of them. This is far from being complete, but just the list of the people that are more often quoted. Uh, on this subject. Goldreich, Kaul, Alexander, Tsar, Mignard, Hutt, Eggleton, Marling, Efroimsky, myself, Correa, and Ragasso. So, to start with the theory of Darwin. What says the theory of Darwin? Initially, is the following. I have the, I, this is the Earth. Okay, I will always call the, 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 the Earth and the Moon so it's more easier than say the first body, the second body, etc. So uh, I, I will focus in the, in the, in the conversation on, on the moon uh, creating tides on the earth, but obviously this is, work, this is valid for all other problems, including the tides of the earth over the moon. Okay? So I have here the moon. The moon is attracting the earth it creates a differential field so that the Earth is stretched in the direction of the Moon. Okay? First approximation, the Earth is a triaxial ellipsoid. In fact, in fact, if I don't consider rotation, it is a rotation ellipsoid, revolution ellipsoid. Okay? It's stretched in the direction of the moon. So I have high tide here, I have high tide here, I have low tide, sorry, low tide here, and low tide there. And the stretching is given by the, 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 the prolateness of this ellipsoid, which is the, 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 the major axis, the minor axis, minus one, which is given by this quantity. This is, uh, well established theory from since the 18th century, and uh, we don't have to, to, to pay much attention to her here, so we uh, consider it okay. Well, but we may, we may pay attention to one point, okay? I will all the time talk about this ellipsoid, but if the bodies are too close, this is not enough. If the bodies are too close, I have rather a situation like shown here, a kind of egg, okay? Because if, it, okay, the ellipsoid means that the differential attraction in these two points is the same as between these two points. This is true if the moon is not too close. If the moon is, is too close, the, the action here is much more intense than the, the, the action here, and the, the situation becomes asymmetric. 
like indicated in this figure. This is just a, a footnote that to, to have in mind that uh, I will talk all the times on the ellipsoids, but in some situations I need to be uh, to have other kind of figures. Okay, so now I will consider this uh, the moon stretch of the Earth. I will consider the, the action of the Earth on the body here. Okay. Suppose, for instance, that for, for a moment that this body is an artificial satellite of the Earth. Okay? It's a third body completely independent of the, 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 the problem. So I want to compute the force of this ellipsoid on this point. Okay, this is this is classical formulas that you find in every book of celestial mechanics. The attraction of an ellipsoid. Here is the potential in the point P. Okay, uh, it may be written in this way, may be written in this way, it may be written in other ways. Uh, what is important, it, it is independent of the rotation of the body. Why? Because the body will always adjust itself to the direction of the moon. So even if, it, if the body is rotating, the, 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 uh, the major axis is always directed to the moon. So this potential does not depend on the rotation of the body. The body is adjusting itself to the, the attraction of the moon. OK. We, put, uh, 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 we have here the, 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 the distance r. We have here the, the angle between the two directions, etc. We can put all machinery of the two-body problem there, Okay, make the substitutions, and get something like this. Okay. Uh, I decompose the potential in the Fourier series. What is interesting to see here is that, okay, uh, when I decompose in Fourier series, I have lots of combinations of angles. There is a series of angles, the more important ones, where it appears here, is two times the longitude of this point. And why two times the longitude of the point? Because the symmetry, the, because of the fact that the high tide is not only under the moon, but also on the other side. So if you, if you are on the hurt, you feel the attraction of the moon, maximum, when you, the moon is there. So it is minimum when the moon is there. And it's maximum again when the moon is there, on the other side. So you have two times the longitude appearing all the time in these equations. And uh, we will talk about this uh, 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 in other occasions too. Don't, don't pay attention to the equation. They are in the paper. Uh, the, 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 the paper is a, a revision paper, so it's a didactical paper. So everything is, is not there. OK. OK, I told I write this. So, <coughs> if, like in the case of the herd, the Earth has a, a period of 24 hours, okay, rotating 24 hours. The Moon is rotating around the Earth in, in orbital motion with 28 days. So, the rotation of the Earth is much more faster than the motion of the Moon. So, since the rotation of the Earth is much more faster than the motion of the Moon, when I consider the frequency of the angles that appear here, these angles, okay? When I consider the frequency of each one, I have the following frequencies dominating. 2 omega minus 2n, 2 omega minus 3n, 2 omega minus n, 2 omega minus 4n, 2 omega n, etc. Okay? You have more complex combinations uh, in, in low order terms. So, look, 2 omega, omega is much larger than n. So, it, it it commands. So we call this term semi-diurnal because the period of this term is 2, the, the frequency is 2 omega, the period is 12 hours. So it's semi-diurnal. <coughs> the same for this one, the same for this one, the same for this one, the same for this one. This one, the end, is monthly because the moon takes more or less one month to make a, a, a complete uh, tour around the Earth. So the semi-diurnal terms uh, command, they, 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 they dominate the, the situation. However, 
if I was in the moon. What is the situation in the moon? The moon is rotating about itself in, in, in one month. So the, the motion of the moon is more or less synchronous with the orbital motion. So in the case of the moon, I have to consider that omega is more or less equal to it. Okay? So this frequency is very small, let us say zero, but it's close to zero. And in the other terms, I have here, okay, uh, 2 omega minus 3n, the, 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 the 2 omega and 2n disappear, 1n dominates, this term is monthly, this term is monthly, this term is with 4n, 2 omega, the difference is 2n, so it's uh, semi-monthly, semi-monthly, monthly, etc. We have to, 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 pay, to, to take this in, uh, in consideration that this, this classification in, in, in which everything here is in the urna, corresponds to a case like the Earth, that is rotating slowly, uh, sorry, it's rotating fast, 24, 24 hours, and the satellite around, the, the, the body that is outside is moving very slowly, with a period of one month. Now, let's compute the force acting on the, the, the point P. Let's compute the force acting on the point P. Well, uh, here I have to, to make uh, 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 the important step in order to, to, to explain these uh, equations I put this equation where I told here is the moon and here is a point in the space where I will put a small mass but I am not interested in the motion of artificial sun. I am interested in the motion of the moon so, second step, I don't want the point P here. I want the point P here. So I want to know the, the force, I think, uh, the force due to the tide that is acting on the moon, not on, on a generic point P. But I have to keep the generic point P for a technical reason. How do you compute the force when you know the potential? You compute the force and uh, say, Force equal to minus the gradient of the potential. Don't confuse this with this thing called force function by, by, by the mathematicians. Okay, the potential is a negative quantity. So you have to put a minus in front of the gradient. Okay? How you compute the gradient? Taking the derivatives of the function with respect of the coordinates. Which coordinates? The coordinates where the, 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 the force is where the force is applied. So back to the picture. I am I am looking at the forces acting on the point P. But when I look at my, at my equations, my equations involve also the coordinates of the moon because the moon is creating the deformation of the body. So I have to keep separately the two the two things. Okay, the force of the, 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 the formation of the earth to the, the moon and the, uh, the attraction of the, the, the earth over the moon. And so when I make the derivatives, I will make the derivatives only with respect to the generic point P. So I have to make, okay, I compute here, I make the derivatives with respect to the coordinates of P, and then after making the derivatives, I make P equal to N, P coincident to N. I am just considering two bodies. So I will get the force if they are written here. Important. Look, the system is symmetrical. There is a symmetry axis. The Earth, the Moon, and the body is here. There is a symmetry axis. The torque due to this force is equal to zero. If I take the force and I make a small Trivial calculation, okay, I, I, I compute the work done by the force, I see that the work is, is given by an exact differential. So the system is conservative. Okay? There is no, there is no uh, energy uh, exchange in the problem. So this problem is boring. No torque, conservative. So there is nothing to do with it. 
So this was a problem when Darwin considered this problem. Uh, to this part of the problem, you may found it in the book by Lord Kelvin, for instance, uh, completely developed. This was important to study the, the tides on the oceans, things like that. But for the, for the study of the evolution of the system, uh, this force served to nothing. So Darwin introduced a dynamic theory. What is the dynamic theory of Darwin? I told you that the body is always adapting its shape so that the, the, the major axis of the ellipsoid points to, towards the moon. Okay? But, doing so, I am assuming that the Earth is a perfect body because it adjusts instantaneously in that direction. The Earth is not a, a, a perfect body. The Earth is a body that has some elasticity, some viscosity, and sometimes, uh, sometimes the Earth behaves like a fluid. Uh, the, the fact that sometimes the Earth be, 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 uh, behaves like a fluid, you can see that the Earth is round. That is not a cube. That is not squared. It's wrong. Why? Because it behaves like a fluid that looks for the equilibrium, and the equilibrium for a fluid is the spherical surface. So, what says Darwin? Okay, let's go back to the potential. So, you have here a lot of terms, okay, the, the angles. He says, okay, the actions are not instantaneous. So, let's introduce a dot, a leg in these terms. So, when I have here 2 phi minus 2 L minus 2 omega, I will write 2 phi minus 2 L minus 2 omega minus epsilon. Okay, I will introduce a leg. I have to pay attention that these terms have different frequencies. So here I will introduce a leg epsilon 0, here I will introduce a leg epsilon 1, okay, etc. So I will introduce different legs when the, 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 the frequencies are different. So every term, every term will be transformed in this kind. Cosine is phi minus epsilon. Okay, okay. I, I can make a simple decomposition. Uh, cosine is phi minus epsilon is cosine of phi. Uh, the Taylor expansion in this leg. Cosine is phi plus epsilon sine is phi. Cosine is phi plus. But I can change the sinus in cosine just to, to, to make the analogy. And this analogy is important because it's something that, uh, uh, even if it's trivial, uh, it has been realized very recently. Yeah? Cosine phi is the original tide, the last tide. The Earth points towards the moon. The main term, for the main term, phi is the semi diurnal tide and the tide points to the moon. But if you look here, if you look at here, for this, this part of the, 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 look, instead of phi, now I have phi minus 90. So, there is a difference of 90 degrees. Since I am looking always at the more important time, that is the semi diurnal so, Phi here is two, is two times the longitude plus etc. For the longitude, I will have a difference of 45 degrees. So, this is the, the, the elastic tide. This is what we call an elastic tide. And if I make the picture of the two, so the elastic tide is there, is pointed toward the moon, but the elastic tide is at an angle. The vertex of the elastic tide is at 45 degrees the deviation with respect to the, 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 the elastic type. Okay, so I have the force, I already told about it. Uh, this lady here is Diana, a Roman goddess. This was a... a, a Greek, Artemis. Greek goddess. Diana? Artemis. Yes. Ah, Artemis, but Diana was, uh, Diana was Roman. Diana is the Roman. The Roman name of a Greek. <laughs> <laughs> Greek goddess. So, uh, Darwin used a kind of poetic approach to, 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 to consider this fact that I am considering 
uh, one body that deformates another body, and this other body is adding this one. Because in the gradient, uh, you look just one part. So he says that Diana is deforming the Earth, and Earth is perturbing the motion of the Moon. Okay, but Diana and the Moon are the same. But in the equations, I have to get, I have, I have to put them in it before I, I make the gradient. I have to consider them as two separate bodies. Okay, so we do this taking care of this, but. Just after making the gradient, I drop all uh, stars, and now uh, if I have no more gradients, I don't have more to take uh, uh, care about separating what is the body creating the deformation, what is the body being uh, perturbed by, by, by the deformation. But here are the forces. So big equations, much more ugly than the equations of Antonio. <laughs> Okay, uh, what, what I, the equations are read, right, written there to show this, look, when, uh, let's look, take this first term, 8 epsilon 0, 7 epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 5. So this term is a combination of one term with the frequency gives the, the lag epsilon 0, one term which frequency has the lag epsilon 1, another term with the frequency has the lag epsilon 2, and so on. I have made no hypothesis about what the legs ever. So I keep them separate. And what I see is that the coefficient here are, are formed by several different legs. So I, calc I compute the torque. And I use the conservation of the angular momentum. The torque acting on the body will be the torque acting on the, the torque, at, uh, the, 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 the reaction will be acting on the earth. And so will, will uh, affect the rotation of the Earth. And I write the equation for the rotation of the Earth. Okay? The torque, the torque is no mystery. I just have to make R uh, cross F by the force. So, I write the equation for omega. This is the equation for omega. I drop all terms that are, that variate very quickly and keep only the terms that, have, that are slow. Okay, I have a H over the fast terms. Okay, again, epsilon zero, epsilon one, epsilon two. We can continue and make the theory without imposing a law for the legs. But this is very, uh, okay, you, you have to carry out the time, several different legs. So the best is to, uh, to fix the legs. And, and this, you will find the, the several theories uh, that exist on, uh, on the market. One kind of theories. This is what Darwin has done. The legs, <coughs> the legs are proportional to the frequencies. So uh, if, if you, you have a time lag common to all terms, and the lag of one term is the frequency times the lag. Okay, the, uh, the fre yeah, the frequency times the time lag, and the time lag is the same forever. So the 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 the, 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 the this theory are theories say theories with a constant time lag. Uh, in this case, if you look at the frequencies, semi diurnal, semi diurnal, semi diurnal, semi diurnal monthly. So this in this case, epsilon zero, epsilon one, epsilon two, epsilon three, epsilon four will be the same. Because the frequency, omega is, I am in the case omega much larger than n, so the omega is dominating. So uh, I will have this uh, epsilon zero. Uh, I have to take a, attention, for instance, here epsilon zero, epsilon one, and epsilon two, they will have different signs. Okay, if I take epsilon one, epsilon two is minus epsilon one, because two omega minus three n, the difference is minus one, and here, the other is, uh, is two. So we have to pay attention to, to some details, and I we can continue. What, but what is interesting is that omega is much larger than n. All terms here are semi-diurnal. So the second kind of theories, but found by, based on Darwin, are the theories it's constant phase lag. 
the origin that say no, instead of putting epsilon zero, epsilon one, epsilon two, etc., we put the same frequency for everybody, for every term. Okay? So these are the theories with a, with a constant phase lag. Okay, they work well because you see of our initial terms here are semi-diurnal, so they have the same frequency. Okay? Uh, <laughs> I told here that epsilon 1, epsilon 2 uh, is a, a change of sign. Forget it. It's wrong. Not here. Not in this case. In the next case. Okay? <coughs> so we have everything here is semi diurnal. So I am making a small mistake, let's say, comparing with the other with this term. But the results are more or less the same. This will more or less do not affect the results. A, a, a small change in a numerical coefficient. But we know now from the studies in seismology, from the states of the, 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 the motion of the moon with laser, that the, 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 the response of stiff bodies is not of this kind. It's a little bit different. So some people like Ephraim Scandalene have suggested to, to this, a different law. A power law in which the lag is a constant times the frequency to a power minus alpha. Okay? A negative power. And they have suggested uh, seismological uh, measurements done on the Hertz, suggest for the Hertz the number 0.4. So this changes completely the, the, the laws. But it's again uh, just a different law. We have to do to change the, the way we compute the legs, but we can proceed in the same way. And I have to also to cite here MacDonald. This is the, the, the most frequently cited theory, and, but this theory has a problem. McDonald, the theory of MacDonald is very simple. All this mess of legs I am introducing, it is so taking a body with a given shape and just displacing the whole body. It displaces the whole body. So we have just one leg, uh, which is the geometrical leg of the body. Okay? But this is a problem. When I come here, when, 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 I, when I make the Fourier decomposition of this case, I will find terms that have the same frequency and different legs, and terms that have different frequencies and the same leg. So the case of McDonald is considered as being unphysical. It's very simple. Okay, it's much simpler than the others, but it's unphysical. It does not define what we call a rheology. The rheology is all the, the, the response of the hertz to any stimulus uh, happened, which is the law it follows. Silvio, can I make a question? Is it for just rocky, rocky bodies? Rocky bodies? Yeah, stiff bodies. Okay. Hard bodies. What about gaseous bodies? Huh? What about Jupiter? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> okay. No, this is this. The Jupiter follows very well uh, Darwin's law. Okay, the, the Darwin law. Well, low order Darwin theory is friendly. Okay, uh, not to understand how this complication of the legs, the algebra is very simple to be done. It can be easily adapted to different models. We can use it to study bodies in which we have a core and a mantle, two different, two different parts, or even more than that. And we can uh, see all the effects that the action due to res response attenuation, because we are talking of the frequencies, but even the, the, even the stretching of the body, it responds to an external action. So it's not instantaneous. It's not only a question of the angle, but also of the, 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 the intensity. In the paper that I mentioned, this is perfectly considered, not here, because otherwise it, uh, this is not the essential point, so uh, I keep it out. So I order theory, Darwin theory is feasible, and this is just to, 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 to call attention to some discussions that we find in the literature. Uh, there is one guy in France that was very, very upset 
because uh, me and other people were using just expansions to the square of the eccentricity and they use the expansions to the seventh order of the eccentricity, so the eccentricity to the power seven. And what is written here is worth. We can do it. But given our ignorance of the actual rheology of the celestial bodies, the accuracy of the expansions of two higher orders may be illusory. Okay, you have arithmetically something very precise, but it's physically wrong. So, uh, second order in this approach is enough. And in fact, seven is a mystic number, so uh, uh, we could, I could also explain a little bit by seven. <laughs> Not only from this outer, but many others. Let's think. So here I have the 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 the, the variation of the, the the so the frequency of the body in case of the earth, and we can <coughs> there is a minus sign here, so. Uh, the frequency is being uh, decreased. So the Hertz has now a rotation of 24 hours, uh, but the rotation of the Hertz is becoming slowly uh, slower than it is currently. Uh, uh, we know from uh, some uh, biochronic and geochronic uh, chronology studies that the, the, the duration of the day 300 million years ago was about 20 hours, 28 hours. So the Earth is busy. So it was about 20 hours. So the, the, the Earth is becoming uh, every time slower. We will become synchronous with the, 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 the moon. Well, we know that the moon shows always the same uh, side. Right, the Hertz. So if I am in the moon instead of the Hertz and I consider the same problem, the equations are the same, what I see is that the moon is, is rotating synchronously uh, about itself. The motion of the, the moon about itself is synchronous with the motion of the moon around the Hertz. So I take the equations uh, and I write these equations. Uh, I, I will put the, 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 the body is very close uh, to the, the, the synchronization, and I use the, 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 the same rheology as Darwin, so the, the, the legs are proportional to the frequencies. So the frequency here is zero, so this part y0 goes to zero. Uh, near the synchronization, what interests to me is that it's very close to, it's much smaller than the next leg, and the other legs are positive, uh, epsilon 2 and epsilon 1 are negative because one is 2, two omega minus 3n, what the other is 2 omega minus n. I am now making omega equal to n, so the two results are numerically similar but with different sign. And I write the same equation as before, I get this one. One constant, doesn't matter what this constant is, epsilon 0, which is the first lag, he is the lag of the same journal tied here minus 12 epsilon 2 e squared. Well, this is different of zero. Okay? <coughs> if, I, if I insist that the, 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 the motion is synchronous, the motion, the rotational motion is synchronous with the, the orbital motion, epsilon 0 equal to 0, and I have here omega equal to a positive quantity. So it cannot be synchronous because I am getting a, 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 a frequency that is not equal to zero. So we cannot have a synchronous solution as far as the eccentricity is different of zero. And the eccentricity of the motion of the moon is different of zero. So I can make it different. I can, uh, so I, I will try what, what is necessary to have the frequency constant. I will put here, uh, it is equal to zero, and I will solve it, and I will find that the, uh, I don't know if you see because this is in front, but the frequency of the stationary motion is the mere motion 1 plus 6e squared. So 
in the stationary motion, the frequency is a little bit larger than the orbital motion. Attention, if you close them, you may. Ah, no, sorry. Yeah. So, we, we say that the, 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 the stationary solution is not synchronous, if the eccentricity is not equal to zero, but super synchronous. Synchronous solutions cannot exist if another torque that is not being considered is not, does, does not exist. Uh, in general, people uh, remedy the situation uh, assuming that the, 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 the body uh, has a natural triaxiality, so we have two effects creating the torques, and one torque will compensate the other, and we can have uh, synchronous solution. But, so we have two possibilities. Either the motion is super synchronous, either the spin orbit resonance exists, but it is forced by a counteracting torque. And this counteracting torque is a permanent deformation of the body, because when the super, super synchronous tends to put it there, it creates a torque in the, in, in, in the other sense, and we we'll get, get some position of equilibrium uh, in between. Well, this is not concerned the rotation. Let's now look at the, 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 at the orbital elements. To study the orbital elements, we will use uh, uh, Laplace equations. So, again. We use Laplace equations. Laplace equations uh, does not create any ambi ambiguity. So I, I write Laplace equations like this. Uh, there, is, there is a technical detail here that, that doesn't matter because I will, when I use Laplace equations, this is more this is equivalent in some sense uh, to what happens when I compute the gradient. I have to, to separate and to compute exactly the, the, the gradient over the, 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 the other body before making the, the, the thing. There is some technical details, exactly the same that I explained for the gradient. The other question when I use Gauss equations is the following one. This also is something that is often forgot in the literature, the existing literature. Since one body is much larger than the other, then the reaction is not taken into account. But if you consider two bodies that are, have the dimensions uh, with some, uh, le uh, some level of, the, the, of parity, of some similarity, if you have here, so here is the Earth. It is attracting the moon with a, a, a force. This is the, the central force acting on the moon. So this is more force. Here is the... the, the is the tidal, is the force, is the, is, is the, act, is the force acting on, on that point because of the noise felicity of the body. Caution! If that force exists, there also exists another force acting on this body which must be in, 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 in equal and opposite to that force. So, so we have to consider the reaction. And when we consider the reaction, things become a little, okay, the, the, this is trivial. So the force air, R, that we consider, no matter if you are using Laplace, Lagrange variational equations, or if equivalently we use Gauss equations, the force must be M plus M over M times the, the, the potential that was computed. I have to put a correction to take into account the reaction. So I will have the, the variation of the semi-axis and the eccentricity. Again, epsilon 0, epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 5. The continuation depends on the adopted rheology. The most, the, the most well-known uh, equations are the equations that were derived by Peel uh, some 40 years ago. 
Pio considers the case of a fast rotating body, a planet, and a synchronous satellite, like the Moon. And they consider the case of how legs are equal. So the case of constant leg. Uh, no, no, this is not a problem because, as I told you, uh, in, the, in, in that case, the, 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 the frequencies are very similar. All frequencies are the same in the urna, which is small difference. So uh, uh, this, will not, this will not make a big difference with respect to the canonical Darwin theory. And these are the formulas. The only difference is that instead of 51 here, if we take the other theory, the, 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 like Darwin, we have 54. And uh, instead of 19 here, we have 22. But you know, there, there are several quantities here that we don't know the value. So the fact of uh, having a coefficient a little bit different doesn't, doesn't uh, change the, the qualitative results. But when the first planets were discovered around other stars, Several people rushed to study what happened. You know that the, 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 the planets that were discovered by, uh, by Kepler or by Koro, uh, etc., the, 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 the planets are very close to the, the stars. Much of the discovered exoplanets are very close to the star. And they have a very fast motion around the star. Periods of one day, two days uh, are found in great quantities. So some people rushed to use equations of Peel. But the equations of Peel were done. For this case, I have here a fast rotating planet and here a satellite. In the case, in the case of the, 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 the exoplanets, it's different. In general, I have an exoplanet rotating around a star uh, close ones with periods of one, two, three, four days. And the rotation of the star is 20, 25 days. Like the sun, the sun has very slow, has very slow rotation. All stars have a very slow rotation. So, the thing is very inverted. So when I, when, when, when I compute the, 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 the frequencies, now, N is big. Omega is, is small. So what will determine the, 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 the frequency of the term is, is the mere motion. It's not omega. And the mere motion here is 1, here is 2, here is 3. Three times. So this term is annual, this term is semi-annual, and the term is tiers annual, and so on. So we cannot use the equation of Peel when we are studying the, the, the case of, uh, of an exoplanet very close to a slow rotating star. We have to use the, 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 the right equations, and the right equations, OK, they are given here. Uh, OK, they are found in the reference that I have given in, in the first uh, transparency, in the first slide. Excuse me. Well, Is it epsilon 0 prime or the order of 1? No, no, no forget about the primes. Okay, this so is a detail is that is explained in the paper that uh, is, is related to the, the, the epsilon zero or epsilon zero prime is related to the fact that in one case we are considering the, 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 the response in the stretching or not. So uh, I, I should, the others also had the primes that I have hidden, but I forgot hidden these ones. <laughs> So only this. I forgot hitting these ones. We do. We have to, to make a, a break or not, or continue. It's okay. So I think you prefer to continue. So we will be free early. Okay. So I, I take these equations, and uh, I will consider a, a hot super Earth. So a uh, planet which is uh, some which whose mass is sometimes the, the mass of the Earth, uh, I will consider five times the mass of the Earth. I will consider the semi axis very small, uh, and I will consider that the, the period is three days. Yeah, it's, it's a very fast, uh, fast rotating around the star. 
Look at the equations. The equations have a binary sign here. And they have the eccentricity here and the square eccentricity here. So both, both depend on, on the existence of the eccentricity. And when I make, when, when I study what happens, we see that it happens. Uh, so here is the same major axis. Here is the eccentricity. Uh, the variation in time is along this line from uh, right to left. So the same major, major axis decreasing and the eccentricity is decreasing. The eccentricity is tending to zero and semi-axis will tend to uh, an equilibrium value. Equilibrium because when the eccentricity becomes zero, the effect disappears. I am just considering the types on the star, on the big body. Okay, so in, when, when this happens, the, the effect, the, the semi-axis and the eccentricity, after the eccentricity is equal to zero, stop having a variation. Uh, this figure here corresponds, to, this is a very fast, in astronomical terms, phenomenon. Uh, this is corresponded to about 3, 30 million years. Let's continue. What happens if I have two planets? Okay, if I have two planets, I have also a problem. Because, uh, okay, how, how will... The equations exist, but they are not, they are not uh, friendly. How to, how, how to study the problem in which I have a simultaneously tidal effect and interaction of one planet and another planet. Okay? So in that case, it's better to look for a different approach. And this different approach is the theory uh, that has been proposed by Minyar 100 years after that, 99 years after that. Okay? What is interesting to see is that you, if you construct the equations of Mia, and then if you take the equations, expand the, the equations, and compare with the equations given by Darwin, you have, okay, uh, in the case of constant time lag, means lags proportional to frequencies, even to the third order in eccentric in inclination, the equations are exactly the same. So mean arts force reproduces correctly uh, the Darwin theory uh, for the case of frequencies proportional to uh, to lex proportional to frequency. And this is very good because what the mean arts gives, I will is one force like it is for the, 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 for the tide. Okay, I will come back to, to explain this. The for, it, it gives this force. So, from the point of view of the study of the problem, it's easier. You have the, the normal problem of the one central body and two planets, or one central star and two planets. Okay, you, you consider the forces acting between the planets and the forces between the planets and the star. And you, and you add one more force <coughs> in your problem. So you can, you can make the integration of the problem very easily. Uh, okay, you make simulations very easily. The equations are much, much more easy to construct than in the other case, using Mignard force. Well, how how we uh, obtain Mignard force? We obtain Mignard force in the following way. Okay, first, important. Uh, Minyar uses different notations as the ones that I have introduced here. Okay? He put the stars here instead of putting them. Ju just the different of notations. So uh, since I was taking this formula, uh, I was lazy to, to rewrite them with a different notation, and I keep uh, the notation by Minyar. But this is just, just a change of notation, no? You have the same thing. This body is creating the stretching, and the stretched body is perturbing the movement motion of the point P. 
and the point P is the same as the point F. Okay, exactly the same. Okay, the potential is the same as I showed before, except that instead of having cosinus psi, psi the angle between the, these two directions, I will have this written <coughs> in terms of scalar products <coughs> of the two, the two radius vectors, the radius vector of this one and the radius vector of this one. So this is the same formula that I, I, I have shown. And the Miyar makes a trick. No, this is okay. But this is if the body responds in a perfect way to the, 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 the stretching. If there is some, if, if, since the body is not perfect, the body has a, some viscosity, at least, even if they consider it as fluid, it has some viscosity. So it takes some time to respond. So I will do the following. I will substitute R star, R star means the, the radius vector or uh, the position vector uh, of the, the, the body that is stretching the earth but I will not take the, this body at the time t, but at the time t minus delta t. So it introduces a, a, a this is not fixing well. So it takes one, one, one delta t earlier, okay, the position of the body. And it considers not a rotating frame, but he remembers that we have this, this direction, in fact, this body is rotating. He, he introduces also, he puts also a, a different angle, okay? An angle that is proportional to the same delta t. Okay, he explains in his paper how, how he made this construction. Uh, it may seem a little bit arbitrary, uh, uh, telling like that. Okay, but it works very well. Okay. So, okay, uh, we compute the potential. The potential is there. So the potential is just, just substitute R star here by this quantity and make the, 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 the expansions. Okay, some Taylor expansions, not Fourier in this case. Some Taylor expansions, you get this. So you take minus the gradient of the potential and you get the force. Then you say, but, P and A are the same body, so R equal to R star, okay? And then we get this very sympathetic formula that works perfectly uh, compared with, that reproduces Darwin theory exactly. Okay, this has never been proven, but it has been proved that just uh, if we take all these functions to the third order eccentricity, in both cases the equations are exactly the same. So we can now study two, the case of two exoplanets. We can study the case of two exoplanets. So we consider two exoplanets with masses, five times the mass of the Earth, and I will put a big one, one mass of Jupiter, disturbing the motion of this super Earth. <laughs> semi axes are there, doesn't matter, okay? Uh, what happens? Okay. Let's look at the evolution of the same axis. When I consider the Earth alone, the super Earth alone, around the star, the super Earth, I told you, it will decrease, okay? The super Earth will decrease with time. Up to have the eccentricity equal to zero. And when the eccentricity equal to zero, it stops decreasing. So, the blue curve. But if it is being disturbed by, by a, a, a larger body, the eccentricity will not be allowed to go to zero. So the, 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 the process will continue and the, the, the body will fall continuously. So if one planet around one star, one Earth around one star, may remain in a motion more or less uh, stable, okay? In these approximations, we, we always we can put other forces that changes the scenario. If we have another Jupiter after him, 
it will induce electricity in this motion and the body will fall over the planet. <coughs> the planet will fall, continue falling up to fall completely on the star. Okay. Uh, the use of the 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 the, the, the difference between in using Minard's formula or the Darwin one is that the Darwin Minard's formula is given a force. I am integrating x y z z uh, with a force that uh, perturbing the, with a new disturbing force. So I am integrating t equal to one, t equal to two, t equal to three, etc. So if I want to, to, to make uh, 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 some millionaires, this will take a lot of machine time, and worse than that, errors will propagate, and I, uh, and I, will, not be, I will no longer be able to, to, to go too far. Okay, uh, what happens more or less well is, well, there are six Brazilians here behind myself, so I can say that this is a gambiarra. So this is something, some, some, some the dirty trick, okay? And the dirty trick is the following: we scale the problem, so we we increase the 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 the, the, the disturbing force, so we have an increased uh, action. So this can be done, but with care, okay? Otherwise, we can have completely artificial. Uh, results. What is interesting also, okay, but here is the evolution of the eccentricities. Okay, in the if, if the eccentricity, if the body is alone and the eccentricity is falling like that, okay, the eccentricity is falling like that. Otherwise, the eccentricity is trapped in, in a constant value. This is the, the super Earth, this is the Jupiter. So the, the eccentricity is trapped in, in a certain value. Here is the, 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 the this, this is, was discovered by Margeling and is called sometimes the, the, the first stationary eccentricity. Uh, the periods. <coughs> okay, uh, okay, this is the period of the, two, the, 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 of the, the, the planet. Okay, is falling and up to uh, when it reaches the neighborhood of the, 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 the very neighborhood of the star, the period becomes very small. But what is important is that in some sense the two periods, uh, the period of the rotation and the period orbital, remain 